Hello and welcome to Driver's Therapy. Today we're going to be reviewing our 1994 Mazda RX-7 FD and our 1991 Acura NSX. And let me tell you, we own both of these cars, we've driven them, we've worked on them, and this is going to be a really good review, so you guys are in for a treat. All right, so we have to start the review off by talking about some quick specifications, and I mean real quickly. Well, first off, the RX-7 weighs around 27 to 2,800 pounds, depending on the options and equipment and trim and stuff like that. But it is a very light car. To give you an example, the S2000 is 2,800 pounds. Now, the NSX is 3,100 pounds, plus or minus. Some websites say they're 3,010 pounds, but of course it depends if you got some CD changes or not, it all varies. Now the interesting part about these cars, and for some reason I thought that the NSX was a 50-50 weight bias because of the mid-engine, but the NSX is a 48-52 bias, and the RX-7 is a 50-50 weight distribution bias, which is pretty cool. Now as far as drag coefficients go, the RX-7 is at 0.29 of course some people say 0.29 0 0.30 depends if you have the r1 aero package the wing the lip and the nsx is at 0.32 now the nsx was about sixty thousand dollars when it was new and the rx7 was about thirty thousand dollars when it was new but there's going to be a lot of information that we're going to tell you that's really going to tell you why there was a big price difference and why the nsx is in a different category, but the RX-7 is probably one of the coolest and most amazing cars to drive, and also with the biggest potential. All right, so we're gonna talk about their driving experience. And I've taken both of them out for drives, I've gone into canyons, the mountains, I've accelerated, I've stopped, and I've done a lot of driving with both of the cars. Now I've driven the NSX more, but let me tell you, I've had a chance to get well acquainted with the RX-7. And that's important because when people are giving you reviews, they sometimes borrow a car for an hour. And really, I don't think that's enough time to get acquainted with the car. So I was pacing around the room yesterday thinking how I would present the RX-7's driving impression. And the best way I could describe it is if you've owned an S2000, it is like an S2000, but with a turbo. And let me tell you, in my opinion, if you have a supercharged S2000 or if you have a very properly built turbocharged S2000, it is a perfect car. And in my opinion, the FD is really, really awesome to drive and nimble. But it is the power to weight distribution that really makes the car feel a lot faster. Now, when you drive the RX-7, it feels really nimble. As a matter of fact, I feel really confused because you don't feel the weight of the engine. And the reason why I say that is because usually when you drive a car, you could just feel the weight of the car when you accelerate or when you decelerate and whenever you're just moving the car around. But there's something about the RX-7 that just feels light. Like it really truly feels very light. There's just something about the rotary engine that really feels light. And it's really hard to explain because when you're driving a car, you almost feel like you're losing like you're missing a big chunk of the weight, but it feels right. And when you accelerate, it just doesn't have a lot of crazy vibrations and it really is a big difference. And if you think about it, the rotary engine isn't very big. It's actually really small. And I think that's how Mazda was able to achieve that 50-50 weight distribution. Now, the driving impression of these cars is that you're gonna try to take turns and you're gonna try to do maneuvers that you never have because it just feels really nimble. It is a very small car. As a matter of fact, when I was putting it in the garage, I was surprised how much space there is to the right, to the left, even compared to the spot that it took, the GT4 spot. It is a very tiny car, but it really drives very, very well. When it comes to the NSX, and we're gonna be comparing these directly, the NSX feels really different. And I think the word that people usually use is it's more refined or blah, blah, blah. But I think that the NSX went through more testing. And the reason why I say that is when you drive the RX-7 and I have aftermarket suspension and I'm not sure if it would feel the same with OEM suspension, 
but when you get to higher speeds I really don't feel like I would want to just dive bomb a corner or really you know push the car to an extreme when you're doing almost triple digit numbers and the reason why is because I really think the NSX went through a very thorough testing and uh, phase meaning that they took it out to the track and they just tested it and tested it and they really refined the car at both low speeds and high speeds and that they did that to a point that you could actually feel it as a driver the nsx really hits the ballpark in driver refinement it feels very comfortable at high speeds like you have a lot of confidence in the car at high speeds where in the rx7 you feel confident if you're driving normal but just feeling the car itself and be, being very nimble i would just feel very uh hesitant to you know be be doing some extreme driving without actually fine-tuning the suspension for that now that doesn't mean that you can't do that to the rx7 coming from the racing world you could take this car you could corner balance it you could fine-tune the suspension you could fine-tune the weight bias of the brakes you could do a lot of things that would make the car specifically for the track and at that point in time with its weight with its acceleration with its power then it would definitely be a car that would compete uh, hardcore with the NSX when it comes to those high speeds but I really think the NSX had the time the funds the money and at the time they were racing in motorsports they had the resources to really fine-tune the car when you're talking about these two cars with literally a thirty thousand dollar price difference when they were being sold where is the thirty thousand dollars difference in as far as the car well it goes to the engineering and to the refinement of the car let me tell you the rx7 is probably one of the coolest funnest cars you will ever drive and it does something that the nsx really doesn't do unless you modify or customize the air intake box so you could add an extra noise to the, your left ear but the rx7 really does something really unique and that's its sounds So the sound that the RX-7 make is really crazy. So the rotary spins, it is like literally spinning super fast. So the turbo sounds you get happen super fast. Anytime you're on a throttle, you hear the like the whistle and the whine and the spooling up of the turbos. And it is a lot of fun in the stock platform. So I would say that that is an extremely great thing with this car that really adds to the driver experience now one of the things that separates these two cars like i said earlier was the refinement of the cars at high speeds the testing but also one of the biggest things that you guys probably have heard of now the nsx is my baby i love it and i just got the rx7 and i've literally been working on it almost every day upgrading it doing some small modifications and bringing the maintenance up and let me tell you when it comes to maintenance and rx7s people really don't know what they're getting into if you're not really mechanically inclined the rx7 isn't one of those cars that you could just own and do an oil change and move on unless you live in a big city and you have connections and you have friends and you have people who work on these cars or a very reputable shop you literally have a big learning curve and there's a lot of intricacies with the 13b that you have to know otherwise you're going to have issues and one of the biggest issues with the rx7 is the vacuum's rat nest and let me tell you it could disable your second turbo your first turbo and it could really disable the whole experience of the car with the single solenoid vacuum hose or an actuator and it is very intricate to actually diagnose or fix these issues on top of that you need to use the right oil you need to add some oil additive you need to make sure your oil injection is working and you need to make sure you get keep the temperatures down and you need to make sure that you watch your oil uh, level as well not because it uses it uh, just randomly like it drips or it falls out or there's a leak it's because it uses it in the cycle so there's more responsibility with the rx7 a lot more compared to your traditional honda which is literally an oil change spark plugs filter in your occasional timing belt and valve adjustment and whatever else you need with the wear and tear items the rx7 is definitely more uh, sensitive and requires a lot more attention 
but when you get it right, the driving experience is 100% worth it. Now, Doug DeMuro said that the RX-7 is one of the most beautiful cars you've ever seen. And let me tell you, both these cars are amazing. But at the end of the day, I'm telling you right now that the RX-7 is going to be one of those cars that is going to go up in value and it is going to be cherished because the driving experience was not only a bargain back then, but it is a bargain today. I'm super excited that we have a chance to own it, experience it, and I hope you guys learn something in this video. And again, we appreciate you watching. You guys take care, and we will see you soon.